The Gordon program has really opened my eyes in terms of what good leaders look like, what they do, and how to be a good leader. Engineers need to know how to lead a team so that we can keep driving the innovation and the technology within our country. It's taught me how to take the skills that I've learned and apply them to you know, realistic settings. When I heard of the Gordon program, it was exactly what I had been waiting for. At MIT, thanks to the vision and generosity of alumnus Bernie Gordon, our Gordon Engineering Leadership Program is helping students develop the toolkit of skills and hands-on experiences that make for highly effective leaders. Now, why should a science and engineering institute focus on developing leadership? Well, at MIT, we feel a responsibility to use our distinctive skills to take on the world's great challenges. Clean energy, the environment, climate change, smart cities and sustainable transportation, the global crises in water, food, and healthcare, the future of communications and computing. Responding to these urgent challenges demands the fearless problem-solving abilities of the very best engineers we can educate. But as has always been the case, superb engineering isn't enough to solve the world's most pressing problems. The problems of the future will be solved by complex multidisciplinary teams that must make swift decisions in the face of staggering uncertainty. Finding real-world answers in real time will require a command of policy, social context, and the political process as well. In short, to solve the challenges of the 21st century, the world needs leaders. In the last several decades, in many schools, there's been an emphasis on more and more about less and less. And there are very few people today who are able to wrap their arms around a very complex product with the various disciplines and come up with a solution. And those people that can do it are the leaders. We need to think about how do you actually lead an engineering project, and more importantly, how do you develop in young people the ability when it comes to a real engineering project? It's preparing students with the skills of leadership, of social responsibility, that will allow them to not only be the thought leaders of the future, but the do leaders of the future. The Gordon program at MIT was founded in 2007. We have developed a program that is designed to enhance the already excellent education students get here at MIT with additional leadership training and opportunities in an engineering context. By sowing the seeds of the skills and the capabilities and the attitudes that are inherent in a leader in our students. We are creating students who are going to emerge in five or 10 years as really very capable leaders of our industrial infrastructure. When you run an engineering project in industry, it's not enough to have a good idea. You need to convince other people that that's a good idea. You need to get a budget for it. You need to find customers for it. You need to make it real. There's really three different parts of the program. We want to give all students essential leadership skills to make them more effective as members of teams, to make them more effective if they're leading teams, to make them more effective at making decisions and understanding the group dynamic. UPOP spends a year laying the foundation for the Gordon program. We raise their awareness about the need for these skills. We give them practice and then we help them reflect on it. We introduce students to real mentors. We have a strong relationship with over 300 employers who are lined up to hire sophomores. We then have both one and two year more hands-on programs where there's a, a wide array of short subjects that students participate in that are in accompaniment to their regular academic curriculum. We went about creating a curriculum that consists of four major chunks. One on people and organizations, one is on innovation and design, one is called engineering leadership. It's the broad set of models and skills that an engineering leader does, and one's on project engineering, how you actually run a group of people to deliver something on time. We have a weekly engineering leadership lab. It's very hands-on. It's led, organized, planned, and really executed by students. Success was measured by how much weight the bridge could support over a period of time. Beyond that, in a general sense, success is measured as the ability of a leader to enable the team to actually deliver on a problem. 
We change the rules on them midway through. We enforce deadlines. We're unreasonable. We bring forth surprises. In fact, the project that they have to do isn't fair because the world is not fair. When you're really working in industry, stuff happens and you have to deal with it. I did learn a valuable lesson today, and that was to observe the surroundings and see, had I stepped back, maybe I would have realized that, you know what, maybe I should have been leading everyone at the table and not just this particular bridge. You can't just stand in front of a classroom and say, okay, I'm gonna lead you through a lesson in integrity. You have to instill those over time, through role modeling, through immersion, through practice, and through students getting to observe others with those capabilities and characteristics. I remember last year I had a couple of really spectacular failures when I was put into a leadership position, and I got feedback, and I learned from that and from my peers who are incredibly talented. Part of the Gordon program involves the students spending uh, what we call an internship plus at an engineering company, where their assignment is to be placed in a position where their leadership skills can be exercised and to make a difference in the company. We have great contact with industry leaders who provide relevant example and experience, and they really help you kind of guide your career trajectory such that you can have the skills you need and know the steps you need to take in order to lead in engineering. Young MIT graduates can enter industry already armed with the kind of skills they need to not only be a good engineer from a technical point of view, but to be a good engineer in terms of making their ideas actually happen. I feel that my time in the Gordon Engineering Leadership Program has definitely given me the confidence to really step outside of my comfort zone and emerge as a leader in situations where it's not clear where there's a leader. The program has given me a lot more confidence to speak up and know that my opinion will be valued. It's allowed me to think about how I can go about developing skills that will make me a more suited leader in future positions. One of the things that I've learned is that this type of activity doesn't work unless there's a primary advocate for moving the school in that direction. And I'm very happy to say that MIT has such an advocate. It has more than one advocate. I would hope that we would be a model, that we would successfully develop a program, that we would codify it to make materials available, and by this dissemination process, that this would be the beginning of the next wave of innovation in the engineering education throughout the world. A faculty member once observed that the hardest lesson to teach MIT students is that in the real world, the best technology doesn't always win. Even the best idea rarely succeeds on its merits alone. To rally a diverse team of colleagues, to persuade skeptical funders, to truly deliver innovative solutions to humanity's great shared problems, we must educate tomorrow's engineers to be tomorrow's engineering leaders. And I'm inspired by your commitment to developing the curriculum and practice that will turn our students into those leaders. Thank you.